good morning. Uh, I'd like to just, uh, I guess, introduce you to uh, Medeca Copper and Gold this morning. Not necessarily going into a lot of uh, technical details on the projects, but really more of a sense of what uh, Medeca is uh, positioned uh, to achieve over the coming two to three years. Just from a very high level, uh, Medeca is an emerging uh, mid-cap multi-asset miner focused on copper and gold. Uh, I mean, what does that mean? Uh, the company is developing already a portfolio of projects with different risk profiles. There are two producing projects, the Tuju Bukit uh, open-cut gold oxide heap leach operation and the Weta uh, also heap leach, but the Weta uh, copper cathode uh, SXEW operation. Uh, from a, a development or a growth profile perspective, uh, beneath the Tuju Bukit Gold Oxide project is a very substantial uh, copper gold porphyry deposit, currently at resource stage uh, and going through a de-risking process at the moment as a portion of that resource has been identified, the upper high grade zone, uh, for being converted into a reserve in anticipation of preparing uh, bankable feasibility studies. Uh, the scale of that is approximately 250 to 300 million tonnes, uh, of course subject to the outcome of that uh, uh, resource to reserve conversion program. And then in terms of growth profile, uh, looking further ahead, uh, the company also has a 66% interest in the Penny uh, Gold project in, in Sulawesi. Uh, and then needless to say, uh, Indonesia uh, has a very rich uh, endowment of, of, of metals and there'd be a number of other uh, potential growth targets as the company continues to develop. In mining, we, we, we sort of love to understand and to discuss the geology and the, uh, the construction and the operations side. But of course, mining is a, a complex business. Um, it requires the balancing of many different interests. It's a, a complex from a stakeholder point of view as well. And as a relatively new company, uh, Medeca has started to assemble the different parts that are required to deliver on its, on its vision and to deliver on its strategy. Key is strong and reliable Indonesian shareholders. I'll take you through that in a moment. But increasingly, as we're in a world where resource nationalism is, is, is an important theme and where certainly uh, various countries you know, seek to participate in their projects, um, and, which is an absolutely reasonable demand or request, the company has a very strong Indonesian heritage um, and, and is a long standing track record in Indonesia. Sound financial position, uh, despite the current producing assets, the development uh, opportunity at the Tuju Bukit Underground is substantial and access to capital is critical. Uh, and I'll take you through how the company has been positioning itself um, both in the debt and equity capital markets. Uh, experienced management team, uh, already referred to the complexity of mining. Uh, you need a strong team to deliver big projects like this. And, uh, six and uh, five and six about asset quality, but commitment to sustainability, sustainability, the social license. Without a social license, you don't have a business. Going through the shareholders in a little bit more detail, uh, three Indonesian shareholders uh, make up approximately 50% of the company. Uh, Providence, Saratoga, and uh, Boita here. Each of these uh, shareholders have been active in the Indonesian business environment for many years now. Each have been successful and each have built very strong reputations in their own right. Uh, Provident is a private equity fund that was founded some 15 plus years ago uh, and a very strong record in entrepreneurship. Medeca currently has a market capitalization of just over US $1 billion. This is the third billion dollar business that Provident have been involved in building. Their initial uh, uh, interest was a, a company called uh, Tower Basama, uh, essentially uh, building and managing the towers for mobile communications across the Indonesian archipelago. They also were the exclusive partner for JD.com in Indonesia, helped with the creation of JD.ID, which has recently been merged with Gojek. So again, very strong uh, entrepreneurial track record. Saratoga, uh, similarly well-known, uh, also has a strong investment track record. Uh, and Saratoga and Provident have uh, uh, together been involved in the creation of Tower Basama. And then finally, Boyta here, the founder of Adaro Coal. Um, Adaro stands out as a world-class coal mining company. And, and perhaps we can look at Medeca's aspirations as being uh, similar but in the copper and gold sector. Access to capital. Uh, the company currently has a strong financial position, market capitalization of around a billion US, uh, 
current debt of uh, around 265. Uh, EBITDA uh, is um, expected to be around 200 million for the current year. Uh, I think they're the high level numbers, but beneath that has been a, a lot of work as each of the current producing projects, the Wedar project and the Tuju book, Tuju book project have gone through their development milestones. In the last 12 months, uh, Tuju Bukit was refinanced with a $200 million facility and recently announced Medeca uh, completed a $100 million corporate facility. This is just the beginning of what will be uh, a very substantial investment program. Uh, but the caliber of banks that have been attracted into both of these facilities, I think, says a lot about the uh, position of the companies and also the rigor that the company has also been through in terms of the due diligence processes that it takes to close these sorts of facilities. Uh, so uh, Barclays, Standard Chartered, HSBC, Sockchen, BNP, Credit Agricole, Goldman Sachs, UOB. Um, this creates a wide network of banking relationships that will be critical when it comes to subsequent project financing stages. In terms of access to equity, the company is still a relatively uh, young company. Um, the Indonesian listing to date has been, uh, I'd say, um, relatively quiet. The company being primarily uh, funded through the three key shareholders and this project financing that I've just described. Um, but the purpose for coming here today is start to introduce the company to uh, uh, equity investors, start to build the free float on the Indonesian exchange and recognize that it's going to be a journey over the next three, four, five years. And there'll be a, a number of opportunities as we de-risk uh, these projects uh, for uh, equity investors to participate. So we're in the early stages of introducing Medeco to shareholders and there'll be some upcoming opportunities there. Uh, management, I've talked a little bit at a very high level about the projects that we have. Um, I think that um, one endorsement of the quality of those assets is the quality of the management team that Medeca has been able to attract. Uh, Rick Ness, uh, for many years, was a key part of the leadership team at uh, Freeport's Grasberg project. Uh, also has been closely involved with Buddy Hijal. Uh, Colin Moorhead, uh, the past president of Oz IMM, and uh, again was part of the Newcrest leadership team, instrumental in uh, the resource work at Cadia. Uh, Mark Anderson has recently joined the company uh, from Rio Tinto after a long career there, including COO of the Kennecott Copper Project in Utah. So I think um, Peter Scanlon, also um, notable in terms of his experience uh, with uh, Tease, uh, building numerous projects across Indonesia. I, I think one thing you know, that we can say is that these people haven't just come you know, to, to sort of keep a seat warm for a year or two, but these are the sort of people that are attracted to strong projects, these people that want to deliver world-class projects. And this is what Medeca, um, the opportunity that Medeca can present to them in terms of you know, their personal aspirations. So I think that the management team is also a strong endorsement of the assets that Medeca has assembled. Sustainability, uh, social license, uh, this is a core part of the group's values. I guess in terms of you know, how it's prioritized, uh, certainly uh, you know, technical de-risking, uh, complex operations are key and interruptions there uh, can disrupt um, the company's uh, earnings. But social license, once you've lost it, you've lost your entire business. It is absolutely um, core to uh, the company's ongoing sustainability and success. Um, but then also it goes the other way in that it's a, a value of all of the people that make up uh, the company, some uh, probably close to 2,000 people now. I think, um, as I mentioned, don't have time to go into a detailed description of the individual assets. Uh, and certainly while I'm here over the next couple of days, happy to, to take any questions um, to um, discuss in detail over a cup of coffee. Uh, but I think that... I'll just go back to where I started that, you know, Medeca has already, as a quite young company, been successful in taking the first steps on its, uh, on its vision to create an emerging mid-market multi-asset uh, metals mining company. Uh, it has uh, two strong producing projects. Uh, forecast production at Tujabuka this year is around 180 to 200,000 ounces. The Weta Copper project uh, last year went through an operational turnaround Cathode production was 17,000 tonnes on track this year for around 23,000 tonnes. Uh, and also success there with exploration to extend the life of that operation. 
And then when we talk about Pani, we also talk about Indonesia and, and its geological um, uh, wealth. Uh, certainly, as the company develops to grow, uh, we see it as a partner of choice um, and has, uh, stands in a, a strong position to continue to execute on um, building out that portfolio further. Um, so that's um, a brief introduction to the company, and um, that's where I'd like to end, unless there are any questions. Uh, I, I, I think, um, I mean, it, it's it, there are many elements to that question, so it's sort of hard to really say for sure. I, I think when you look at it purely from an asset quality point of view, um, and you look here at this, this final slide where it benchmarks the Tuja Book at Underground to, to global copper resources, um, it is a world-class resource. It does need some work to de-risk, and the construction of it is going to be a major undertaking. Uh, it's too early to sort of put hard numbers on that, but it could be a $1.5 billion project to deliver. So from that perspective, um, deposits like this are certainly a rarity and in demand. And certainly to be able to deliver a project like that is not um, a simple undertaking. It's not, 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 certainly for a young company, it's difficult to acquire those skills. So there's some strategic rationale where that would make sense. I think the flip side is um, the, the, Indonesian ownership requirements, we have to divest down to 51% over a five to 10 year period. Um, means that there always needs to be a strong element of Indonesian ownership in this project. But I think it also goes back to the just general complexity of mining. I mean, my personal experience is that, you know, we become a bit myopic and we really um, become very, very um, engaged in say the resources and the geology and the de-risking and the construction. Um, but there are many parts to running a successful mining company. And it goes back to what I mentioned about the uh, social license, about building a strong management team. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of experience that is very specific to the jurisdiction that you operate in, whether that jurisdiction is Indonesia or Australia or North America or Chile. So I, I think that um, uh, it's an attractive opportunity, um, whether it would be a 100% acquisition or more of a joint venture. Um, we can only wait and see. Thank you.